Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Nuns. Today we're studying Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's get started. Okay, when Habakkuk chapter 3 starts out, it's a change of tone from the rest of the book. So a little earlier, we were all talking, and, um, and Jack's made a good observation. Jack said that the first two chapters of Habakkuk, there's a lot of questions and a lot of like struggle. Like uh, Habakkuk is complaining and he's worrying and all this kind of stuff. But when you get to chapter number three, really the whole tone of the book changes because now he's not so much looking at how bad life is and how unjust things are. He starts to now look more at God. So where in the first two chapters, his eyes have been down here. In chapter number three, his eyes are up here because he, he even begins this passage. It says, Lord, I have heard your speech and I was afraid. O oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of your year, in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. Now here's what happens. The, the later verses, starting in verse 3 and following, you can trace out the history of the Old Testament in these verses. Now, notice what it says in verse number three. And God came from Taman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. So Mount Paran is another name for, it's an ancient term for the Sinai wilderness. And whenever you read through this, God came from Taman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. This is, this is kind of the journey. That's where the Israelites went through after they came out of Egypt. They came through this same promised land wilderness into the land that God was giving them. And so Habakkuk is remembering back to all he's heard about God. And what he's saying, like look in verse number four. It says his brightness was like a light. He had rays flashing from his hand and there his power was hidden. And before him went pestilence and fever followed at his feet. Well, the beginning of that says that on this journey, when God was on the move, that there was a light. Well, when do we see light most? We see light most when it shines in the darkness. Well, listen, as God was on the journey way back in the ancient days, can we remember any time where God was a bright light for his people? Yes, because in the wilderness, God took care of his people by during the day, he led them as a, as a pillar of cloud. And at nighttime, what was all in the sky? A pillar of fire. Pillar of fire. That's what this is talking about. And so it's talking about God's, God's movement with his people. And Habakkuk is saying, Lord, I remember all of these stories. And this is where John's takeaway. This is what he noticed. What did you get from all this? Okay, so Habakkuk here is talking about uh, how he remembers how uh, he remembers hearing about his stories and what God did for all of his ancestors. And um, he's just like, I kind of want to see that. And he's just wondering and he has a few questions. And yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, haven't we all been in a place where we said, you know, I've read all these wonderful stories in the Bible. I wish I could see that kind of stuff happen in my life right now. For instance, Habakkuk knows that God's punishment is coming on his people. But Habakkuk also knows these old stories from the Bible where God turned a bad situation into a good situation. Now, think about it like this. John, what are some Bible stories that we know of where God, where God was really good to his people? There's David and Goliath, okay. uh, Joseph when he was in Egypt. Okay. There's um, the Moses in the wilderness. Yeah. And there's Noah's Ark. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. And so we can keep going like all through the Old Testament, there's examples where God is good even when the situation was bad. Now, here's what Habakkuk says. He says, God, he says, in the midst of years, make it known. In verse two, he says, revive your work. He says, do it again, please. And what's he asking for? He says, in wrath, because we know we deserve wrath, remember mercy. So even though the floods come and God give us an ark, even though the giant approaches, God give us a slingshot. Even though I, I get sent into Egypt, um, lift me up and, and take care of me. So all of these stories, Habakkuk says, I've got the history in my brain of God who has always worked together for good for his people. He said, God, do it again. 
Now you can imagine as, as Habakkuk starts talking, he, he, he tries to paint a picture of what it's like to see God on the move. And he talks about God with these giant steps and he's thundering and booming through the world. And with each, uh, with each step of his feet, it's almost like if you've ever seen a, 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 like a movie where a bomb goes off and how this, how this huge wave goes out from this big explosion and everything else around it is knocked down. It might not have got blasted by the fire, but the, the shock wave knocks everything down. Habakkuk says, he said, when God, when God walks, his glory covers the heavens. His brightness, the, the rays of lightning flashing from his hands before him when, he, when his feet step down, there is pestilence and fever. That's the shock wave of his power and his authority. His power is seen to defeat land and humans alike. And nothing is able to stop him. And then as the, the passage keeps going on, it, it says his ways are everlasting. So it says in verse number six, it says, and the everlasting mountains were scattered and the perpetual hills uh, bowed. Well, now listen, in our minds, when we think of things that last forever, we think of like mountains standing forever. We think of things that in our mind, from, from fleshly mind, we think like the mountains will be there forever. And what, what Habakkuk says is when God is on the move, only God lasts forever. Historically, look in verse eight. O oh Lord, were you displeased with the rivers? Was your anger against the rivers? Was your wrath against the sea that you rode on your horses, your chariot of salvation? Well, what had God done historically to the sea and to the river? When his people got to the Red Sea, what did God do to it? He parted it. When they got to the Jordan River, what did he do to it? He parted it. He parted it. And so this section reminds us of Exodus and the Red Sea and Egypt and Joshua and the sun standing still and the Lord giving his people their enemies' lands and all of it, all this kind of stuff. And, and then it ends with this beautiful hymn of faith. He said, though the fig tree may not blossom. And what do you do with figs? Eat them. You eat them. He said, though the fig tree may not blossom. Well, if it doesn't blossom, they don't get fruit. What do they eat? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Though the no fruit on the vines, though the labor of the olive oil may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock be cut off from the fold and yet there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And what he's saying is, James Boyce said this, I like it. He says, Habakkuk embraces all the worst calamities that he can imagine and nevertheless, he triumphs in them in the knowledge of the love of his Savior. And so whatever I don't have and I can't count on, like Habakkuk said, even if there's no food to eat, he said, I will worship my God because I can always count on him. Can I just remind you, faith is tested when nothing else in life can be counted on. When you can't count on anything else, you can count on God. Tony Evans says, when you know God's character, that's who he is. And, what, and his works, that's what he's done, then you know that you can trust him even in the dark. I like that. Now listen how it ends. The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like a deer's feet, and he will make me walk on high hills. I never understood that verse until a few years ago. I was watching uh, Discovery Channel or something, and they did a special on these, uh, these deer that are only found in Israel. They're called the Ibex, I-B-E-X, and they're tiny little deer. And it showed uh, a predator coming up, and it wanted to, it was hunting one of these Ibex. And the Ibex was down in the field, and he was kind of hopping around, and he sees the predator, and he runs to a cliff, and the cliff went straight up. And they're filming the whole thing, and I'm like, run, little deer, run. And all of a sudden, the little Ibex jumps up on the cliff. There was a tiny rock hanging, and he jumped up, and he, he stood there and he jumped and he jumped and he jumped and he jumped. And the, the, the narrator of the thing said, these Ibex are so unique that they can balance their whole body on tiny little, a tiny little grooves in the rock. And so that while the predators come down and try to get them, they leap from tiny little place to tiny and they don't fall and they get away. So he says this, the Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like the deer's feet. He will make me walk on the high hills. That's what he's saying. 
Even though bad predators are coming, God makes his people able to get away. And he says, so God is good. Even if my troubles are bad, God is good. All right, we'll see you tomorrow as we read. Bye. Bye.